Well, the uh, the term rock and roll legend gets tossed about uh, kind of loosely, and, and sometimes it applies and sometimes it doesn't. But uh, in the case of our guest this evening, <laughs> it may not be enough. Oh. Ian McLagan. It's plenty. It's pl well, maybe it's more than enough then. Good Ian to McLagan, see you, Mark. Good to see you again, too. It, it, it's rare that we talk without a, a cold Guinness in front of us. <laughs> I know. Well, there'll be later. It'll be later. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Ian McLagan, a member of the Small Faces, founding member of uh, the Faces, toured with everyone from Bonnie Raitt, Rolling Stones a couple of tours, and lately has been turning out some pretty amazing solo projects. Thank you. And uh, you have got to be so pleased with, uh, with some of the, the response you're getting on Never Say. Yeah, it's finally, um, yes, I'm really, really pleased. It's, it's very gratifying, you know, you, you, every time you do your best work, but you know, I think I, we excelled ourselves this time and um, people are kind of noticing it, which is great. It, is. it just makes it more of a struggle for the next one, but that's, that's <laughs> what I'm looking, I'm enjoying the, the, I'm climbing that hill now. I want to talk more about uh, Never Say Never, but let's take it back to the very beginning and get your response to the words Booker T. Jones. Oh uh, yeah, well Booker T. Jones is the reason I play the organ. Uh, I heard Green Onions uh, back in 62 or 63 mm -hmm. and really it changed my life, you know. Absolutely. I mean, he's just the best. There's no, there's no one to top him. And that B3 carried you through so many great bands over the years. But on Never Say Never, for the most part, you took the B3 and you set it aside and you went for... It wasn't intentional. It's strange. There's only, it's on two songs. It's on the end of I Will Follow and um, in the choruses of Innocent Man. I think that's the only place. Oh, and a solo in when the quiet is over. Yeah. I think that's about it. It just didn't seem to, to fit with what you were doing. I don't know why that is, yeah. Plus it's easy if I'm touring, as I'm gonna be doing some touring solo, right. I'm not taking the B3, I just take a piano and a guitar. So uh, it makes it easier, actually, but it wasn't intentional. The, uh, the album, I think, is your, your finest solo work. It's, it's emotionally raw. I think so too. It's, um, it, it, it talks, it addresses mortality, it addresses you know, the loss of your lovely wife, Kim, almost three years ago. Yeah, well, uh, it couldn't be ignored, you know, and I didn't know if I'd make records or whether I wanted to continue. I can hear you call my name Or somebody's whispering That sounds like you I can see you standing in the shade the sun is glistening and it's blind in my view. I had a beautiful email from um, a woman whose husband died in January and she said she saw the Letterman show with us playing Never Say Never and it really touched her. Well it really touched me the fact that it could touch her and so I wrote her a note she's written me back and yeah it's uh, there's something to be got out of it. Take me to, the, to that beach out by Sydney, Australia, where you wrote that song. Well, actually, I started writing it um, in Texas on the beach. We had a house uh, rented for, this, for a month or three weeks, and Kim died just before we were going to go down there. And I called to cancel it, but it wasn't possible because, you know, they couldn't re-rent re it at that late date. So I went down there with the dogs and... Uh, Loads of hooch, basically. And uh, I would feed the dogs, walk the dogs, feed them, and then I'd sit out on the beach and just roast, jump in the water. And one day I heard them barking in the house, and the house was um, only about 50 yards away. And uh, I turned and I could see her. Doesn't make any sense to anyone who hasn't been through this, but people who have been through a sudden death or whatever, have a lot of people have experienced it. It's, you want to see your wife, you want to see her, you want to be with her, you miss her terrible. But I actually saw her as clear as day. I went running to the house, the dogs had stopped barking, of course she wasn't there. So that's where the second line comes from. It's, I can see you standing in the shade, the sun is glistening, because it was so bright. And I, I'd look away and I was crying, you know, and so the sun was glistening on the waves. And Anyway, I went to Australia, my brother lives down there in Sydney. And I'd go down the beach there and just get away from everyone, you know. And, and continued writing the song down there. It just seemed to be a theme. Never loved you anyway. 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 Never loved you anyway.
Yeah.